Hey y'all and welcome to today's video. In today's video I am participating in Christina over at the DIY Mommy's Channel's Christmas DIY and Decor Challenge. I am super excited to be, there goes my cat. <laughs> I just made her get down off the counter so she's mad at me. There goes that intro or, or maybe I'll just still use it. I don't know. Anyway, anybody else have pets always running messing up their filming because I, I do all the time anyway so what I have is several thrift to treasure items that I want to share with you I have several garage sale thrift store items that I am going to flip and upcycle to make them beautiful home decor for my house this season so come along with me as I turn these thrifted items into beautiful treasures for my Christmas decor okay the first project I'm gonna work on is this old shutter door that I purchased recently at a garage sale I'm just showing you an old clip here because I forgot to do an up-close clip of this before I started painting it I'm gonna be using rust-oleum spray paint in the heirloom white it's the satin finish which I really prefer not to have the satin finished I prefer the flat but I'm having a hard time finding flat in my area so all I'm gonna do is spray paint both sides and I'm gonna be using the side that is flat because I have some letters that I'm gonna glue on there so I really want to pay close attention to the side that is flat here that I'm working on right now I'm showing you up close that there is some of the parts that are distressed and some that are not just to give you an idea if you wanted to do something like this what it could look like if you did not distress it however I prefer it to be distressed so that's what I'm working on now is just going along all of the edges and then all along the slats to give it a really good distressed and old country look I am also going to be giving these old I've had them stored away and not used them in a while, but I want to repurpose them to use not only in my other decor, but also in this project. So I want to give it this flocked snowy look. And I don't really like the spray snow that they sell because it is so messy. So I have learned that you can just go in and spray paint these things. And it really does give it a snowy kind of look. However, it does not have that thick kind of piled on look. So if that's what you want, I would go with the spray snow. However, I just spray paint anything. So I pulled all of these out and gave them a good spray painted flocked look. Then I'm going to take it in the house and I am going to put my letters on and my wreath and go ahead and finish assembling this cute little Christmas sign. All I did with the wreath is take one of the little branches and just kind of stick it through the slats to hold it on and that way if I ever wanted to change out the wreath I could. Now I'm just going to glue on the letters um, little tip here I do not know why I did the hot glue first I always do the e6000 first I don't know what I was thinking so do not use the hot glue first you put the e6000 on first because the hot glue glues so fast and the reason that I use both of those glues is that the hot glue will help hold everything in place while the e6000 is setting up and really getting hard so here you see I'm adding it to the Y now I'm doing it the right way I did the E6000 first and then the hot glue just kind of measuring and make sure that everything is in place going to move on to these old frames that I purchased at Salvation Army a very long time ago. I actually think it was around Elizabeth's birthday that I purchased these. I knew that I would end up using them eventually. I just have not found the perfect project for them, but I, I have the perfect project. Now, if you remember, I purchased some Courier and Ives placemats at a garage sale um, probably a, a month or so ago, and I really wanted to display these in a way that was not and placemat form so I thought that these frames would be perfect all I did was spray paint them with that same spray paint color and then I come inside and I took the old picture out of one of those frames and I'm going to kind of use it as my guide here in just a minute to see how much of the placemat I need to cut out to fit into the frame I'm 
just going to trace around this and that I'm using as my guide and just you won't be able to see the pin marks so don't worry about that and I know that some people are probably screaming and they cannot believe that I'm cutting up this Courier and Ives placemat but honestly I would have never put these out and used them as a placemat so I'm absolutely in love with the way they turned out and the way that they are in these frames I think that they are beautiful beautiful like this and they're beautifully displayed i've got them kind of low so that my grandkids and elizabeth can see them really good i just think that they really enjoy looking at this art as well Okay, the next thing that I'm going to work on is this $1.99 winter scene picture that I purchased at Goodwill not too long ago. I absolutely love the peaceful vibe that this picture brings. I think that it is gorgeous. It needed a frame though, so it only came like in a matte. The picture only came in like the matte thing, so I needed a frame. This frame I got when I went to that free estate sale and got all of that stuff for free. So I thought that it would work perfectly, but I do end up having to cut down the mat and the picture just a little bit to make it fit. But that's okay because this frame was absolutely free. So I'm just going to use the little picture that was inside as my guide and kind of trace around it so I know exactly where I need to cut. That's beans and cornbread that I'm cooking in the background. I kind of forgot to get that out of the frame, but oh well, that's real life going on there. So now I'm just going to trace around and get this picture ready to go in the frame. Here it is all in the frame, and I absolutely love this. It is displayed beautifully on my fireplace mantle. Okay, next up is this sled. What I'm gonna do is just take the bottom part off because I wanna spray paint that black. Then I am going to spray paint the sled with the same Waverly heirloom white chalk paint just because that's what I have on hand. And that's gonna kind of act as my primer. And then I'm gonna go in with this plaid. It's a red color in the Waverly chalk paint. And I'm gonna chalk paint the sled. But what I want to do is I want to add some baking soda to this paint because there is a couple of parts on the sled that had this really rough texture like with glitter and all kind of stuff on it that I could not get it to sand down really smoothly. So in order to kind of fix that problem, I decided I would just give the sled a rough looking texture all over. So in order to achieve that, I need to add baking soda to my paint. And I'm just going to show you here in real time that this just mixes up very beautifully. There's nothing really hard about this. And your paint dries and does everything like it should. It just gives it somewhat of a bumpy rough texture. That's kind of what I wanted because I needed it to cover up what I was trying to hide actually. So that's all I'm doing is I'm just mixing in the baking soda and then I'm gonna start painting the sled. Here's where I'm showing you that it had the bumpy texture on it that I'm trying to kind of help cover up and hide. So that's all I'm doing is I'm just going to go in and paint that and I'll show you at the end here kind of what it looks like. I want the inside of the sled to be white so I am just going to show you how I go very carefully around the edge of the sled with my little sponge. It's a little bit easier to get in those detailed areas with one of these little angled sponge brushes.
Next up is this adorable little pot. And I just want to clarify real quick for those of you concerned, this is not a chamber pot. And if you don't know what a chamber pot is, you can Google it. I'm not going to go into that here, but I've actually asked an antique dealer if mine was a chamber pot. And she told me, no, that mine is not a chamber pot. So on to the project. Now, what I'm going to do, I really wanted this to be displayed because I love how it has the red and white. And I think that it would be adorable at Christmas time, but I could not figure out how to display it so that you could see each piece of it really good. So I have this old coat hanger that I also got at that free estate sale and I got it for the purpose of using this middle piece for something all I saw was this solid wood piece that was going to go in the trash so I take that and have my husband cut it down for me and make me several little legs so what I'm going to use with one of those legs is I'm going to make me a little two-tiered tray to display a cute little Christmas display on my bar and I'm going to put candy canes in it for the grandkids I think that it's just adorable how it ends up turning out. I'm not really sure what even made me think to do this. I was actually trying to hang this thing on the side of my refrigerator and display it every kind of way and I could not figure out how to make it just look cute. So I come up with this just out of the blue one day. All I'm doing is I'm just measuring where I need to put the middle piece. So I'm measuring to make sure that it's, you know, even on all sides. And then I'm just gonna trace around the little leg there that's gonna hold it in place and put my glue i'm also using the e6000 again and the super glue and it works beautifully on metal especially e6000 does and again the hot glue is just helping me to hold everything in place while i work This is absolutely adorable. I have this displayed on my bar, which is why I did reach out to an antique dealer because I did not want to have this sitting on my bar if it was a chamber pot. Thank God it is not. Mine is a soup pot. So this turns out so cute and the grandkids know when they come over, they can go up there and get a candy cane that that is their special place where they can come in and get a candy cane each time they come over. Okay, y'all, that's going to wrap up today's video. Thank y'all for joining me today. Don't forget to check out the playlist down in the description box. And I just want to give a big thank you to the Christina at the DIY Mommies channel. This is an amazing opportunity, and I love doing collabs like this. So thank you again. Guys, go out and get creative. If you cannot get out to a thrift store or anything like that just get creative do a swap and shop with your family members that is always fun but just get creative find some things that you have not used around your house in a long time upcycle them diy them to make them beautiful decor pieces in your home you guys we love y'all and we will see you next week with a brand new video when it's christmas time i light up a fire gather friends and family have a bite to eat and some Christmas sweets Chilling out and watch TV Wrapping up the gifts with my fingertips Making up some fancy rhymes oh, so fancy. Just got something fun for my special one But my love don't cost a dime